Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Holmes, and this week at Integrative Brain and Body, what we're focusing on is female hormones. And today's topic for discussion is female hormones and menstrual migraines. Now what we're gonna talk about is specific hormones that are causing the menstrual migraines that women suffer for every single month. So, Female hormones, as a lot of females know, will fluctuate throughout the month. There are times we're supposed to have more estrogen in our bodies compared to progesterone and then vice versa, more progesterone than estrogen. A problem arises is when that ratio starts to change, where we either have dominance of one hormone for the entire month or we're seeing huge fluctuations. Instead of a smooth transition from estrogen to progesterone, we see drastic elevations and declines instead. So there are a lot of other metabolic processes that will affect hormone function, including liver, how well your liver is working, how well your gut is functioning, believe it or not, how well your brain is functioning, and of course environmental and, and factors that will affect hormone function as well, including birth control pills. So what the research is showing is there's actually a huge link to estrogen and menstrual migraines. So specifically, estrogen influences nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide causes vasodilation, which means it increases the diameter of your, of your vessels, your blood vessels. When nitric oxide causes that, what we end up with is more inflammation and irritation to our nerves, which lead to menstrual migraines. High estrogen levels have also shown to influence a nerve in our face called the trigeminal nerve. So high levels of estrogen cause an increase in inflammation and neuropathic pain in that nerve. That's where we end up with migraines with an aura. So high levels of estrogen as well as large declines of our estrogen levels will cause irritation to that trigeminal ganglia, which then lead to migraines. So the best way to determine what's going on with your hormones throughout the entire month is through a saliva spit test. However, there are some things you can do now to help with your hormone function. And that has a lot to do with food. So that's what we're gonna talk about now. So one thing you can do is increase the amount of cruciferous vegetables you're eating. That includes your broccoli, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts because they affect your liver. Your liver loves cruciferous vegetables. And your liver is what gets rid of excess hormones. So we want to have a proper functioning liver for proper functioning hormones. Number two that you can start doing right now is control blood sugar levels. When we're on this really big roller coaster of high blood sugar, low blood sugar throughout the entire day, it causes a lot of stress on our brain. And our brain is our hormone control center for our hormones. So it's like the airway traffic control. It's responsible for the production of estrogen, progesterone, and even thyroid hormones. So if you get tight control of that blood sugar, it releases, it stops the stressor on the brain and we can have proper hormone function. So how do you control blood sugar swings? It's focusing more on your high quality fats and your proteins throughout the day and making sure you're having breakfast, lunch, and dinner.